All right. Hello again, everybody. It's Jeff Weiser again from Ad Astra. Today, I'm here with Silvia Garcia Coloni. She is the CEO and founder of Mira Therapeutics. We're going to talk today with Silvia about her experience and background with stress, trauma, and post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as what she's currently working on to attack these things. Silvia, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hello, and would you please introduce yourself? Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and talk about this very important topic. It has been something we have been working for a while now, and we are really happy to be able to bring a product to the market. So many people don't know about trauma and PTSD or think that is just something that happens to veterans and nobody else. And the reality couldn't be farther than that. So I'm really excited to talk a bit about it and get more information out there and more help out there. And we couldn't be more excited to have you using Ad Astra's uh, blog and video forum to do that. I'd like to start if you could just tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, maybe your research history, what you've done in the past, and basically where you are today based on all of that. So I come from the medical device industry and the pharma industry, so life sciences. I've been over 20 years in that space, I started working with clinical trials and then more generalist type of work and got more and more excited about doing something for health and to get people better. And actually, mental health is an area that I think can benefit a lot from digital and from new technologies, because we cannot solve it with one pill. We cannot solve it with one intervention. We need a little bit more than that. And then is where the technology, self-care, and so many other things come together. So having the opportunity to do that and put it in the life science life was very interesting. And that's how I landed here. So the way we started the company, me and my two other co-founders, Nick and Annika, was really for personal experience with friends that were having trauma and trauma symptoms and say, well, what can we do to help that? And then you go a little bit farther and you realize, well, this is a big problem. Many people have it. So it's not just, can we do something for that one person that we know? And it's very surprising when you start talking with people, how many actually have had experience with that or have experience with that. And the stigma uh, hopefully is now going lower. We are talking more about mental health, especially since what we are living these days. Um, but it's still a barrier to get comfortable with it and to understand what it is. Thank you, Sylvia. I, I will jump around just slightly from the questions that we had laid out here. Based on what you said there, I think it would be really interesting for you to share with us what research or history is relevant for the lay person to understand when it comes to post-traumatic stress disorder or trauma. So there are kind of a couple of things to get your mind around it. One is, what is trauma when we talk about trauma in that capacity? And a trauma, it's something where you really have a fear for your life, for somebody else. So it can be that something that is witnessed, uh, but it, it has to be very intense. It's not just feeling bad about it. You, you really have a fear and it has um, triggered all the things in your body that is for survival. And that's why when the symptoms then happen, that is a flashback, intrusive memory, it's very, very upsetting. It's not just that you feel bad. You really cannot control it and your body reacts like if you were in danger. So things that can create trauma are sexual assault, violence, like seeing somebody being killed or severely injured or yourself. It could be an accident. It could be a natural disaster. It can be also childhood abuse and also even witnessing. So, for example, people who law enforcement, firefighters, but also some of the more and maybe not as known cases is, for example, moderators of social media that have been uh, through hours and hours of looking at content that they need to decide is this uh, really a problematic content or and we need to take it out or not. For example, you know, a lot of the filtering is obviously done automatically with AI, but there is some that needs to be reviewed by a person. And this is where obviously there could be some gruesome content in there. Okay, well, we'll try to post um, some relative content for that here, because that certainly will help us understand a bit some of the manifestations of trauma and PTSD today. Specifically, that would be PTSD, right? Could you take us through the difference between what is trauma and what is post-traumatic stress disorder? 
Yeah, so there are different symptoms of trauma. Typically would be, uh, there are different clusters as well as intrusive thoughts. It can be uh, kind of flashbacks. It can be dissociation. And because you want to get out of this setup, people need to feel something or try to get themselves out of this uh, situation. And actually, some people might resort to self-harm or substance abuse to really just shut it up. Uh, the other things that happen is a lot of avoidance. So that can lead to severe isola- isolation, right? You would not go to certain places. You would not do many things because you're afraid of that might trigger you. I think the, so what I was trying to explain is it's not just trauma is not just you feeling bad about something that is upsetting. Is you cannot control that it's coming back to you. And when we are thinking about self-management and and what we are trying to do at Mira is bring these tools that can get you out of the symptoms. Because if you need to master it by yourself, it's a huge toll to get your mind out of it and do something else, right? So sure. if we kind of stop that from happening and you can go back, whatever you were doing is, is a huge battle that has been won. Okay, well, setting up that idea then about the tools that can be implemented, for example, Mira, that you have developed and are now working on launching very soon, date coming up within the next couple of weeks, probably by the time this is out, it will already be out. I'm excited for you, Ad Astra is excited for you, that's it's fantastic. But leading up to that, could you tell us a bit about where perhaps a brick and mortar therapy has fallen short in dealing with PTSD? Where are the gaps in traditional delivery? So the good news is that there are treatments that work. And if somebody is suffering, it might take a while to figure it out or to get the right therapist and so, but there have been solutions. I would encourage everybody to not lose hope. There is ways to get there. But what therapy cannot do is be with you all the time and help you anytime whenever it happens, right? And it will happen on times that you are not at the office with your therapist or you are not. So how you manage at those times is what we are covering at Mira. And the other thing we are covering is the information. Because when you would go to your therapist, the first thing they're going to ask you always is, okay, so how are you doing? What happened? What were the symptoms? What happened to you? How often? What you were doing? And so on. And they ask those questions because this is what helps them to know what is the best therapy for you. Now, how do you remember that? And again, if we are relying on our memory, that's probably not very good. And especially it's not very good if you were very stressed at that time, which per definition is what happens. Maybe carrying around a notebook would have been what people would do before, or I don't know if they had specific, you know, uh, folders to deal with their trauma. Absolutely. Yes. Many therapists are still, you know, say, well, have a notebook and note things down, but then you have forgotten the notebook. And it's not only noting it down, right? It's also on the moment, making it easier. Well, we also collect part of it automatically as you're using the app. So that helps understand both for the therapist, but also for the sufferer himself or herself and what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So I can certainly understand where the gaps are when the the symptom of reliving comes up, perhaps not much being done differently in terms of the methods. There are some good methods. You know, you relive the experience, you have to immediately take action and re kind of refocus your attention and your mind, correct? The difference and where the gap is being filled is how you're actually doing that. Yes, and allowing you to do it in an easy way, right? So getting your mind out, pulling yourself out of the symptom. Another thing is there are some techniques for treatment that go through a re-experiencing or an exposure, but that is in a control setting. That can be part of your treatment, but then you do it at the therapist's office. In between, when it happens and you don't want it to happen and you cannot control it, this is when it's a symptom that you want to get rid of. We answered a couple of the questions here, kind of in what we talked about. We went through, tell us about your work with PTSD. Is there anything else more you'd like to discuss in in that category? Well, for working with PTSD, as you know, you heard from my story that I come more from a background of dealing with life sciences. But of course, we are working with a prominent therapist and expert on that is Dr. David Yusko. And She's nationally recognized uh, for prolonged exposure in particular, which one is one of the evidence-based treatments for PTSD. He has trained with uh, some of the pioneers for these uh, types of treatment, and it's informing what we should do, what makes sense, what is necessary for those people that suffer from it.